I created an online multiplayer game in just six days. My friends decided to have a LAN party over the weekend, and I thought it'd be a great idea to create a prototype that we could all play together. So I started brainstorming ideas, and I wanted to create a game with cars and also player creativity after watching this GDC talk. So I came up with the idea of horse or skate for cars. The premise is very similar to Ultimate Chicken Horse if you've ever played that. Each round you place an object or an obstacle, race to the finish, and whoever has the best time wins. And so I began. I opened up Unity and began working on the car script. First, I created a simple car provider, which provides the car with the necessary input to function like acceleration, steering, braking, and so on. This will be useful later down the line when we implement multiplayer. Once I had the input, I started with the actual car physics. I watched a couple of videos on how other games do physics-based car controllers, and I really enjoyed these two. Both of these videos go over a Raycast system that can be easily tuned and gives a good mix between realism and arcade driving. Once I had the car controller implemented, I noticed that I wasn't able to turn at top speeds. This is due to the fact that the two front tires were turning at the same angle. On a real car, the inside angle turns far more than the outside angle to prevent traction loss. We can plug the wheelbase, track width, and steering radius into Ackerman's steering formula to get the correct angles. Now that the car control is great, it just felt a little bit lifeless, so I decided to add some juice. I added some screen shake when you collide with objects, as well as some collision sounds and some engine sounds so you can get some more input. I also added a handbrake to allow for drifting, which includes some fake forces that act on the front and the rear to provide a better drifting experience. Finally, I added a smooth hollow camera and some simple air control to do flips. And that pretty much wraps up day one. Day two was a little bit less packed, but I added a velocity-based camera follow that doesn't just follow behind the car, but instead looks in the direction that the car is going. This is a lot nicer. And then I tweaked the car value some more and improved the feel and finished off the day by adding in mirror and adding some multiplayer. On day three, I added my own solution for syncing rigid bodies, which uses state synchronization. I followed a blog on Gaffin Games, which contains pretty much all you need to know about networking games and is a really great resource. I first sent the car's position, rotation, velocity, and angular velocity at a set interval and hard set the rigid bodies to the new state. Doing this leaves us with a really twitchy looking car and we don't want to smooth out the physics simulation. So what we do is we detach the visuals from the physics object and lerp to that physics object instead. After that, I created a network input provider. And if you remember in the start of the video, I used a provider to decouple the player's input from the car. And by doing so, I can now pump in network inputs instead of local player inputs. This is really beneficial because I don't need to change any of the code in the car and everything just works. Later down the line, if I wanted to add an AI player, I could do that easily by creating a new provider called AI Provider, for example. And finally, at the end of the day, I finished off by adding skid marks and playtested it with a friend. On day four, I knew that the original idea was out of scope. I would have to figure out how to allow players to place objects, switch between driving and placing, and also juggle a round system. So in the interest of actually finishing on time, I pivoted to a team racing game. I created a lobby map where players could choose which team they're on and the color of their car would change and be synced over the network. I'm not going to go into the full extent of the team system, but basically what happens when a player starts, they will be added to the player manager. And when a player manager gets a new player, then it'll tell the team manager to add a new team member onto a random team. It sounds simple, but I was faced with a lot of race conditions, which were a lot of fun. On day five, I actually started creating the game. I first created a racing checkpoint system, which allows me to place triggers around the course, and every time a player passes through it, their position is updated in the race. But I wanted to have a team-based mode, so I extended the checkpoint system and basically had it so that teams were ranked based on the number one player on their team. This allows one player to race through the course, and the rest of the team can mess with the other teams, which is a lot of fun. I displayed the info on some simple UI. You can see the place and the lap at the top left and the team leaderboard at the top right. I also added a roll safety lock for a keyboard uh, because whenever people were accelerating off a ramp, they would start to roll forward and it didn't feel right. So in order to initiate an, a roll wire in the air, you need to take your finger off the acceleration and put it back on, which works pretty well. 
Day 6 was the final day, and I had to add a track. It was a pretty bad track, but I'm not a designer, and it's just a prototype, so it'll have to do. Finally, I added the ability to start a race from the lobby, and I was pretty much done. Unfortunately, at the LAN, I didn't actually record the gameplay, but it was pretty fun. People got stuck on corners because I didn't test the map enough, the cars had infinite acceleration, and were hard control when going fast, so people opted to drive in reverse, which somehow provided more control. It goes to show you how important it is to get other people to play your game, as the feedback that they give you is very valuable to improve. I learned that the higher speeds reduced the amount of collisions, which didn't really align with the game, and the maps were too long, the roads were too wide, and the ability to control in the air wasn't used at all. It was actually punished because it was slower. So by making the maps smaller, it'll encourage more player collisions and make it faster paced and more exciting, as well as force people to go off of jumps so you can use the air control. After the LAN, I worked on the project for a couple more days. I fixed the game modes to be server authoritative before all of it was client side just to save time. I fixed the scene loading to allow objects to spawn on the map so you can have like boxes and stuff thanks to Mr. Gadget on the Mirror Discord. I implemented a jitter buffer for the state synchronization to improve the simulation and the smoothness of the visuals. I added local collisions which was suggested from this GDC talk so that people who with high ping can collide with boxes and still feel like they're actually in the world. And finally I added Steam support so we could connect over Steam instead of using something like Hamachi. So what's next for the project? Well, I'm not really sure. I think the game is pretty good in terms of the technicals, but the design and the actual game modes are a little bit lacking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add mini script for game modes. I made a whole video on mini script, so if you haven't seen that already, go check it out. Create maybe a handful of new game modes and maps and keep iterating on the project and just test the ideas. Eventually I'll polish it up, put it on Steam so my Ko-Fi members can check it out, and maybe I'll add some VR support.